Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. Happy new comic book day, June 26, 2024. I hope all you guys found all your books in your cubby, uh, on the new comic book shop wall, mailed to you. However you guys get your books, I hope you guys found all the books that you're looking for this week. I know I did here in the loud, mysterious black bag. Now, as usual, before we get dived into that, I do want to remind you, if you like this kind of content, like, comment, subscribe. Helps the YouTube algorithm spread me out like peanut butter so more people find my Fun Times channel about comic books. Now this week, as usual, I have read all the books. I've got only three books to talk about this week that I read. And uh, another stack here is uh, some stuff uh, that I got in the, uh, in the cheapo bins that I thought was cool. We'll share that. And at the very end, uh, I also got the September upcoming previews. So if you guys like the like to take a look at the upcoming previews with me, then make sure to stay on board. I'll try to get through all this uh, as fast as I can. But uh, loud, mysterious black bag out of the way. In the number three spot with a super cool cover, I had Detective Comics 1086. Really like this cover too. It's like Joker smiles with bats. I was, just a just a really cool cover um i i don't know about this run man i really did i really did like the backup story uh written by alex Pacnadel and uh art by estherin that was a lot of fun uh the main storyline continues to uh to just kind of be okay though um I, I want to say that this issue kind of maintained the same reasonable level of at least we're getting to the end of this uh, kind of a feeling. And, um, it's, you know, reveals, things of that nature. I don't know. I, I've not been the biggest fan of this run, though. From an artistic standpoint, it, it's kind of it's kind of been an interesting dive. It, this might not read terrible in trade, um, on it, to be honest with you, as, as one big story with just kind of the way the art's been could, could really like, uh, set a mood, I think, cause it, it, it is different. It's a different book. Um, so I, I'll give it that. I'll give it that. Um, and that's partially why I've, I've maintained on with it too, is just, uh, it's a, di it's, I wouldn't say it's a breath of fresh air, but it's a definitely a different breath you're taking. <laughs> <laughs> number two spot a brand new run that i picked up on and i'm actually super enjoying this run and um um they're teasing us along with with what with a mystery um uh, as to why spider gwen ghost spider is back in in a in the 616 universe i don't think that's spoiling anything that's as far as i'll go but She's back in, in the main universe, and, uh, yeah, you know, Miles shows up in this issue. I don't, wouldn't say sparks fly, but, uh, maybe there's still some connection there. I'm kind of curious to see if there's any crossover between this and the Miles book, kind of after this one sets its feet, if it gets, uh, you know, if it maintains itself, um, does some of the stuff that, you know, are Miles and Spider Gwen gonna get back together again now that she's back in the six one six? I guess that's a that's a big question overarching that they could they could definitely really kind of tease us along. I, I wouldn't say there's any inklings of that in this issue. The mystery is actually something else that's um, I don't want to talk about because uh, I'm kind of having fun with it and I I recommend the book. I I think it's a great one. <laughs> I, can't, I had to do it. Number one spot, uh, Symbiote Spider-Man 2099, issue number four. Just one more issue in this mini. We've been getting a lot of these minis. I really do enjoy these. And um, this one, this one though, not as not as strong, I would say, as the first and third issue. Um, oh, we got we got a, an airplane going by in the background. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna keep going. I, I would say that there was there was a really strong point in this issue that maybe could have used a slight bit more poignancy for me, um, and and I was left kind of questioning how because I feel like you know the whole context of the symbiote Spider-Man miniseries here is that this takes place 
during the original Spider-Man 2099 run, I believe in between issues 46 and 47, or excuse me, uh, 43 and 44, somewhere around there. And so something happens in this that I was kind of like, I felt like they were going to have to take us back to status quo as, as the end of this kind of wraps up, right? Because it's sort of wedging itself into storylines that happened 30 years ago. Um, but maybe that's not what's happening. So in and of that, like really great issue lands itself in the number one spot. I'm definitely curious to see how they're going to backpedal themselves out of this one or, or, you know, Definitely, this could have ramifications, huge ramifications for our favorite uh, web-slinging superhero from the future, Miguel O'Hara. And, um, yeah, man, I, I had, to, had to get to give it the number one. Such a big Spider-Man 2099 fan, and I'm really enjoying that run. Let's go ahead and get dived into the books that I got uh, in the in the dollarish bins. <laughs> uh, I got a Timeless... Uh, Mole Man, Alex Ross, and I know I have issue number one of this somewhere, um, and so they didn't have, I didn't see issue one in there, I probably would have grabbed another number one, because I love, I love Jim Carrey's The Mask, uh, but I found issue two of two, and so I think I had number one, so I maybe completed a little set here, issue one of two, and issue two of two, I'll have to go through the boxes and look. Um, and then I found two that I thought, I was like, wow, I can't believe these are in the dollarish bins. We have, uh, James O'Barr's The Crow, Flesh and Blood, issue number one, uh, from way back in the day. I think it's from the 80s. I can't quite remember. There was a, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, issue 37, from 1991. Not, not terrible on the grades either. I was really surprised to see that. Uh, grabbed an amalgam, another amalgam, uh, here's a, it's Assassins. I'm not exactly sure who they're crossing over, but that's definitely got to be like Electra. I like this cover too. I don't know, it's cool. <laughs> you guys remember Amalgam? Uh, got a Zen Intergalactic Ninja number zero from Entity Comics. And it's like this foil. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was cool. Uh, Pit issues one and two. I, I I know I have issue one, so I was think I was like, well, I'll grab issue two and three. Now I have issues one, two, and three. And then, unfortunately, missing issue three, but uh, the original Hit Girl run, issues one, two, and four, from Mark Millar and John Romita Jr. Thought those were neat. And I found another kiss. <laughs> kiss number 11. I have a, I, have, I know I have a, a, um, a friend that really likes kiss. So if I grab the, if I, if I find those, I, I do grab them for him usually. Uh, Brigade number one. Fun. It's a Liefeld cover. I, I thought that was cool. Uh, Nightman number one from Ultraverse, if anybody remembers that. A new stand edition. And then four, I believe. Yeah. Four of these Uncle Scrooge adventures from the early 90s, I think. I'm not sure. A dollar fifty price tag, so early 90s or so. Issue 45, 46, uh, 44, 45. 46 and 34 kind of cool right so, uh, uncle scrooge adventures <laughs> the beagle boys more more beagle boys trying to speak sneak up on him <laughs> and that's so that's what i got in the in the dollar bins um i saw so i grabbed these seems like they're coming out with one every month now and so it's like why not it's free uh, Marvel must-haves. Uh, this month looks like we're, you get uh, Uncanny Avengers number one, uh, Captain America number three, and a Daredevil number two. So what these are is you get all three of those issues in here for, for free. 
that's kind of Marvel's way of trying to try to onboard you onto some series. I, I like to grab them, check it out. Uh, obviously, you know, they think, hey, maybe this is a good run. It, you know, more people should be reading it. And so they put it in those because, yeah. Um, so we got our DC Connect. A lot of people like me to go through these and, and kind of show some of the early ones. Now, these are going to be books that are coming out in September. Uh, got Batman 152. Looks like we get a sneak preview that Batman and Catwoman may be getting back together. I don't know. I don't know, guys. That's what that cover looks like. Um, looks like uh, Batman the Long Halloween, the last Halloween. So they're doing another mini series for that. Some of the Absolute Power stuff. Uh, issue number three. A Super Sun number one for Absolute Power. We got Superman 18. Surprise some of these titles that are still going. This Green Lantern one specifically. Or Green Arrow, excuse me. Uh, Green Arrow 16. Because that one just started out. It was just going to be a six issue mini. And then it got... Uh, it's just, you know, it's just selling well. So here we are, issue 16. I think that's great. It, it's, it's great to see some, some successes like that. Batman the Barbarian. Look at this thing. That's crazy. Uh, Nightwing 118. Tom, so Tom Taylor and Bruno still going to be on the book at that point. And we've got Detective Comics 1089. Also still Ram V on writing duties there. I heard they were changing that soon. And I know they're changing the Nightwing one too. So those are, those are two of the titles I'm I'm reading right now. I'm curious who the new writers are going to be. Are you guys going to reboot? I hope they don't reboot. I'm not a giant fan of that. Um, it's Batman's 85th anniversary with exclusive promotional comics. There's going to be like a big Batman day. This is kind of cool. The Detective Comics 27 Facts edition is coming back. Multiverse Collision Detected. I'm not seeing too much crazy. Titans 15, the new action, 1069. Shazam, Power Girl, Flash. All those still continuing on. Lobo Cancellation Special, number one. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll read one DC thing. It says, uh, oh, no, I can't read that. I'm sorry. I can't. It's not, uh, not friendly. <laughs> um, Plastic Man No More, number one. Oh, no. Body Horror Plastic Man Noir. Okay. <laughs> well, that could be different. I think we're getting towards the back here where we've got, yeah, the uh, fac facsimiles and stuff they're coming out with. And then, in the Marvel one, on the front, is Exceptional X-Men number one. Which, I thought we were just getting an Uncanny X-Men, and an X-Men main title, an X-Force, like, is there an <laughs> another title? So confused, man. That's cool. That Avengers cover with Hawkeye shooting Ant-Man. Except Mickey and all them. <laughs> Wolverine number one. Here it is, guys. That's going to be a big one. September. A bunch of variant covers. Some interior art from it. And then, yep. Exceptional X-Men number one. Uh, written by Eve Ewing. Art by Carmen Carnero. I don't know, guys. There's just too many. I, I, I would love to get all the X-Men titles, but I also... Man, this art's really good. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, it, you know, it just cost a Dazzler number one, one of four. I guess they're seeing all the back-issue Dazzler hype, so they're trying a Dazzler series. Not, not too, too bad of an idea. Uncanny 2, Uncanny 3... X Force Three, X Men Four. See what I mean? Like we've already, we're already running like lots of X titles by the time we get to September, and they're 
they're starting up another one that they're calling Exceptional X-Men. We got Nyx, we got Phoenix, we've got X-Factor, Issue 2. Like, there's just so many X-Men titles already. Uh, 274 Facts. Let's see. Predator versus Black Panther. Okay. <laughs> that was issue number two of five, two, or two of four, excuse me. Uh, Blood Hunter, Spirits of Vengeance, Marvel Zombies, Dawn of Decay, Deadpool 6. Cool Deadpool's still going to be going on for a bit. Hopefully that one sticks around. <laughs> He's had a problem sticking around. I saw this too. So there's a new Werewolf by Night coming. It's going to be a uh, red band only, I think. That could be interesting. This is for showing uh, issue two. Uh, Wolverine Deep Cut. Avengers Assemble, one of five. Spider-Man Homeroom Heroes. We got a Venom War, two of five. Venom War Lethal Protectors, one of three. Venom War Wolverine 1 of 3. Wow, they're really going to spread this Venom War out. Venom War Carnage, Venom War Spider-Man, and then Venom 37 is a Venom War tie-in. This thing is, that's big. Uh, so we got Ultimate X-Men 7, Ultimate 4, Ultimate Black Panther 8, and Ultimate Spider-Man 9 for the Ultimate Universe they've got going on. Excuse me. Got a couple annuals, Moon Knight annual, Spider Boy annual, Amazing Spider Man 57 and 58. I really like this cover, actually. That's cool. John Romita Jr. <sighs> That's kind of cool looking, too. A Spider Man Reign number two. I just like, I'm talking about the art more. Carrie Andrews. Uh, Spider Man Black Suit and Blood. Black Suit and Blood. <laughs> okay, interesting way of twisting the gimmick. Kid Venom 2, Spider Society number 2 with Miguel on the cover. What's going on here? Sinister, this new brutal series goes past the edge of the Spider-Verse with a razor-sharp new edge that isn't going to just introduce new spiders, but will also eliminate them. Hmm. Interesting. We've got Spider-Pig, Spider-Man, Miguel, Gwen... And Spider-Woman are all, like, down with Miguel up. Oh, no. I might be grabbing that. I didn't know Miguel was going to be in it. Spider-Boy 11. Great. I'm glad, really glad to see this one sticking around. I hope it sticks. And Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider number 5, which, which we just talked about, issue 2. Spectacular Spider-Man 7, Miles 24. Some other stuff. Moon Knight. <laughs> Fantastic 425. Cap still going. Incredible Hulk still going on issue 17. That really good Philip Kennedy Johnson run. Um, Immortal Thor is still going. It's good for what, a couple pages there. <laughs> and we're getting into some faxes with a Deathlock 50th anniversary special. A Namor, Scarlet Witch. We're about through the comics, guys. Get Fury, and we're into the Star Wars stuff, which I'm sorry I don't have too much of a comment. I don't grab the Star Wars, but there, it's there. We got Inquisitors. That's a pretty cool cover for Star Wars 50. So, anniversary issue. Giant size Star Wars epic. A 50-page extravaganza. You Star Wars fans probably stoked about that. And uh, Darth Vader 50. So both of them are hitting 50. Cool, cool. That's really that's really amazing to see, actually. They've, they've stuck those series out. Of, that's, that's awesome. You get a big, a big story chunk to read, you know what I mean? If you're really a Star Wars fan, that's cool. And, yep, now we're into the, uh, uh, the trades. Or the, uh, yeah, trades, omnibuses, so on and so forth. <laughs> All right, guys, that's what I have today. Um, as always, if you, hey, if you watch this part of the video, give me a like, comment, and subscribe. As always, we'll see you guys next time, and have a great day.